Washington, D.C. from President Biden and the Democrats that have complete control. And thankfully, working with the Georgia General Assembly, we've been able to work to help give some relief to people. We're I guess we're just jumping into this. People, despite what's happening in Washington, like giving a income tax credit back to our citizens, cutting taxes, also giving an income tax credit back to our, you know, you're paying for bo votes. Is that what you're doing? This sounds like social welfare. This has been in the gas tax for since March now, $800 million of relief for our hardworking citizens. So that is what my focus has been on and it's what it will continue to be on. Thank you. And I'm all sound as country as possible. Thank you very much, Jennifer Bellamy. Your question for Shane Hazel. Mr. Hazel, Georgia seems to be struggling right now in dealing with how to I'm Shane Hazel. Legally take on the issue of cannabis in the state. What uh -oh. do you think needs to be done here? How should Georgia address the issues right surrounding now. marijuana? I guess a perfect question for a libertarian. Um, we believe that cannabis is a plant that grows from earth naturally. And the yeah, but the modified versions aren't natural, dummy. The hubris that the federal government has shown in making a Schedule One drug while also holding patents on it is one of those things where we find it somewhat laughable. And it is. So you're on the side of the Biden administration. It is a right of people. It is medicine. It is something that we can add to our industry here in Georgia and really displace a lot of what comes in from outside of Georgia. This is a... Yes, we can beat, have a better weed market inside. A huge win for Georgia. We have a great agricultural sector. We can grow two bumper crops of cannabis every year. The idea that it is still un illegal and that Brian Kemp has talked about this and tweeted about it as it is a good thing when we make cannabis bust and cannabis bust only is a is a real sign that the government in Georgia is using it for the prison industrial complex, for the the law enforcement complex to go after communities that would like to see freedom in this area. So it's a right. That's how we see it as libertarians. Right. We, we love it. You know, if you want to smoke poison ivy. Uh, uh, also, ask me about bath salts. Thank you very much. You may you have a rebuttal. Yeah, I would just like to make sure people at home know that I have been doing exactly what I told them I would do when I was campaigning for governor. And now that I am your governor, uh, we have been going after street gangs and drug cartels. So the things that we're tweeting out there is when our great men and women in law enforcement are, are making drug bust, bust, not from recreational use. It's a plant. Other things. It's a plant. But but that's what. So is uh, so our poppies dummy. My focus is on. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Greg, please ask a question of Stacey Abrams. Yeah, Ms. Abrams, in 2018, you didn't concede defeat to Governor Kemp, and you talked to systemic problems with the state's election system. This election, do you commit to accept the outcome of the vote, regardless of what it shows? And do you stand by your use of words like rigged four years ago to describe the state's election system? In 2018, I began my speech on November 16th, acknowledging that Governor Kemp had won the election. I then proceeded to lay out in grave detail the challenges faced by voters under his leadership as Secretary of State, including the 10 plus two who were arrested in Quitman, Georgia, because they had the temerity to use absentee ballots. I told the story of students who were denied access to the right to vote, even though they had duly registered. 80,000 complaints had come in by that day, and it took four years of federal investigation in a lawsuit that was the longest running voting rights lawsuit in the state's hist in recent history that proved us right. Now, we didn't win every single claim, but we forced massive changes to the election laws. And unfortunately, Brian Kemp and Brad Raffsenberger have decided to restore their greatest hits. Just today, a homeless woman was denied the right to vote in Forsyth County because she could not, she did not receive a provisional ballot because she had been challenged. As governor, I intend to stand up for the right to vote. I will always acknowledge the outcome of elections, but I will never deny access to every voter because that is the responsibility of every American to defend the right to vote. Thank you, Brian Kemp. Rebuttal. 30 seconds. Well, I would just say uh, that Miss Abrams is going to do a lot of attacking of my record tonight because she doesn't want to talk about her own record. In 2018, in the governor's race, we had the largest African American turnout in the country. She said that Senate Bill 202, our recent Elections Integrity Act, what we passed two years ago, would be suppressed. By the way, uh, Georgia has a lot of African American people in the state. Just saying. Impressive in Jim Crow 2.0. Just this past May in our primaries, we again had record turnout in the Republican primary and the Democratic primary. In Georgia, it's easy to vote and hard to cheat.
event And I'd response. like to add just a second here, as a libertarian, 30 seconds although, you, for you. although you will push for people to have access to going to the polls and voting, you're not pushing ballot access. This is a huge, a huge oppression for people like the third parties, the people that want to get their people on the ballot. We have, I think, 20% Democrats, 20% Republicans in the state of Georgia. That leaves 60% of people in Georgia unrepresented by ballot access laws that both of them support. 30 seconds, Ms. Abrams. Actually, to correct Mr. Hazel, I co-sponsored legislation to expand ballot access because I agree with you that third parties should have better access to the right to vote in the state of Georgia. Never have. I co-sponsored it with, a, with one of our independents in the state legislature. But let's be clear about ballot access and voter access. Brian Kemp was the Secretary of State, and he has assiduously denied access to the right to vote. We know that the right to vote is the only way that we can make the changes we need in the state, the only way we can make the changes we need in this country, whether it's access to the right to an abortion, the ability to take care of our families. We need a governor who believes in access to the right to vote right. and not in voter suppression, which is the hallmark of Brian Kemp's leadership. Thank you very much. With, We're with, going to with move all, on. With all due respect, I was called out. I, I would like to just the record reflect it's my time. I'm the Secretary of State. I'm the Tell person him. that created the online you voter are. registration system in this state where any Georgian can vote, register to vote 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So for someone to say that we have been suppressive in our state when we've seen Why turnout increase over the years, including with minorities like African Americans, Latinos and others, to. is simply not true. And again, Ms. Abrams is going to lie about my record because she doesn't yep, want to course. talk about her own. All right, that's we're going to move on great. here. And that's the case. We're going to move on here, Ms. Ha Mr. Hey, Hazel. Hey, uh, hey, Jennifer, hey, your question for Brian Kemp. Senator Kim, several Shut hospitals up. and medical centers across the state have announced or gone through with plans to close their doors, leaving a gap in care and a reduction in services at a time when our health care workers yeah, are already suffering from burnout, lady. from increased demand and workloads. Many are now facing care that will be delayed or unavailable, while our state's capital will soon have only one Don't level one trauma. Center. What will you do to ensure Georgians have access to critical health care services in hospitals? What. Well, I, I would just remind voters at home, there's also hospitals being built uh, across this state and new options for people for health care. That's right. There's a giant one that goes all the way across the state, like right along the Manson-Nixon line. Look, the AMC situation was something that was thrown on a lot of political leaders, including oh. me. But instead of complaining about it and doing the blame game, I went and worked with Fulton County, with DeKalb County, with Democrats to come up with a solution that put state resources into Grady to help make sure people have the... Delbert Grady, the guy who watched The Shining Hotel before Jack Torrance showed up? Access and the care that they need in our state. And I'm committed to continuing to do that in the future. It's interesting that his accent comes and goes. Anybody notice that? Like when he's talking about average Georgians, he gets real fucking syrupy in the way he talks, and then he gets real, like, hospital executive conversation, real upper-class Atlanta. Did anybody else know that? Just me. All right. Shane, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Chuck, you got the final question of Shane Hazel. Thank you. Shane Hazel. Mr. Hazel, you ran for Congress in 2018. That was just four years ago. You That's ran right. as a Republican. You got less than 30% of the vote in the Republican primary. What happened between then and now that made you a libertarian? Oh, I, uh, weed. I, uh, I actually came back to my, my roots as a libertarian. Uh, we believe in freedom. We saw what the Republican Party was. We saw what the Democratic Party was. They are forcing coercion. No matter what they talk about, it's forcing coercion. Whether it's a certificate of need for hospitals, whether it is... Yeah, they forcing hospitals on people. Taking guns away from law-abiding citizens. That, yeah, that are going to put people in those hospitals. I mean, whose side are you on? It is always forcing coercion at the point of a gun from the Democrats and Republicans. Well, how do you think you end up in the fucking hospital? To look at life through consent, the eyes that, hey, we can all have transactions. We do. Oh, you mean like a pro-choice approach? We do it every day in the private sector. 99.9% .9 of us go throughout our day without... Yeah, you can't fire citizens, dummy. Raping people without murdering people, without pointing guns at people to take their property. That is not what the government does under... Yes, let me be in your government so I will... 
so I can have that power too. Republicans and Democrats, period. That's why I became a libertarian. Uh, this is why we're going to send this thing into a runoff. And if people were really looking for something to change, you'd uh -huh. vote libertarian. You'd send a message to both of these parties because these, one of these people will most likely be the executive in a rigged system that you want to be more free. It's rigged. He said it's rigged. That's why I'm not voting. Thank you. That concludes the first round of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question ding, to ding, each ding, ding. of their opponents. Can oh, oh dear. I feel like this is a mistake. Candidates will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and the candidate who asks the questions will have 30 seconds for rebuttal. Doesn't take me 30 seconds to say, what's your fucking problem? By random selection, Brian Kemp, you may ask the first question to Stacey Abrams. Totally random. Well, thank you very much. Um, as many people know, I have over 100 sheriffs in Dorsey. Seriously, this dude sounds like Al Gore on 16 RPM. Dorsey, my campaign, uh, several of which are Democrats. And my question for Ms. Abrams tonight is how many Democrat or how many sheriffs statewide have publicly endorsed your campaign? Mr. Kemp, what you are attempting to do is continue the lie that you've told so many times. I think you believe it's the truth. I support law enforcement and did so for 11 years, worked closely. Womp, womp. It, that is not the face he was hoping to make right after this answer started. With the Sheriff's Association, I'm probably the only person standing here who's ever actually written a, a SOP for police department when I was working for the city of Atlanta. But I have two brothers, one who has committed crimes, and I want his victims to be able to call the police and get the help they need. And I've always supported that right. But I have another brother who has faced being pulled over for driving while black when he was coming back from his job as a social worker. Unlike you, I don't have the luxury of relying on slogans to describe my position on public safety. I believe that we need safety and justice because I love both of my brothers. And like most Georgians, I lead a complicated life. What? Can't, I got to say, Kemp was not expecting an actual answer. Well, we need access to help, but we also need to know that we are safe from racial violence. While you may not have had that experience, too many people I know have, and that is why I will always stand up for making certain that safety and justice are the conversations we're having in Georgia and the delivery we have as the next governor of Georgia. Brian Kemp, rebuttal. Thank you. 30 seconds, Mr. Kemp. Well, I would just tell people that, look, I support safety and justice. But Ms. Abrams refused to answer the question, so I'll let you know that the answer is zero. No sheriffs are endorsing her statewide because of her stances on wanting to statewide defund the police, eliminate cash bail, and serving on the boards of on misdemeanor crimes. Organizations like the Margaret Casey Foundation that supports and gives grants to organizations that are promoting the defund the police movement. If, he, if I may respond, because he actually lied there. Yes, I do seconds. have the support of sheriffs. But unlike Mr. Kemp, I do not make it my plan to list every person who supports me. I have the support of sheriffs. I have the support of advocates. Yeah, but they ain't statewide. He's talking about like big fat sheriffs. The support of victims. I have the support of those who want to be treated fairly in our system. I have to have conversations with the entirety of Georgia. I don't have the luxury of being a part of a good old boys club where we don't Ooh. focus on the needs of our people. And that is why my mission has been. To He's making a good face. That's good. Do that more at face. Put out yeah. Very concrete plans explaining how I will serve justice, how I will serve safety, and how I will serve the citizens of the state of Georgia. 30 seconds, Brian Kemp. Well, look, I, I would just tell people, I know Miss uh, Abrams is upset and mad um, because these are <laughs> she is things that she said. This is not me making this up. This is things that she said in interviews that she's done. And she's sitting on organizations that you can go look at the facts yourself. And that's why the men and women. Google it. That'll work. T just tell them to Google Women it. in law enforcement want a governor that is going to stand with them, who has been with them, not only to have their in back, the but mansion. also stand shoulder to shoulder on things like civil unrest and going after street gangs and human traffickers. Thank you very much. Stacey Abrams, you get the next question for so Shane Hazel. Mr. Hazel, Republicans and Democrats have raised the alarm over the rise in the Chinese Communist Party backed companies purchasing American farmland. To date, they've purchased more than 1 million acres of farmland in the state of Georgia. Would you agree with Mike Pompeo that allowing those purchases in the state of Georgia is a sign of madness? And would you be concerned about the national security implications of the Chinese Communist Party purchasing this land with the support of the state of Georgia? 
Oh, this is not the question he was expecting. He was expecting a, you look like Peter Thiel. Have you ever thought about living on an oil rig? I see the setup for this question. I understand why it was projected at me. Um, as libertarian. We don't. What the fuck are you talking about? Friends, we believe that you own your property and that the state can't take it away from you. And even if you're the Chinese Communist Party, can't sell it or can't determine who you sell it to. Um, the CCP, yeah, obviously, uh, which is going through some its own internal unrest right now. Uh, are they? I, I believe is probably purchasing this with things like central bank digital dollars and yuan. Uh, which are also coming down to a, uh, a critical nature where people are in uprising in China. This is good. This is, you're doing great, man. Hey, man, swing for the fences. I'm on board. What? China. What we need to look at is uh -huh. how these purchases are being made. Are we accepting fiat, CCP, yuan in Georgia as a actual currency? <laughs> yeah, that, that did it. You know what? Boy, she's regretting opening this line of question. I, don't doze off, Stacy. He's going to get something out of this. It's about as good as the U.S. currency. The fiat. Uh, fuck you. A currency that we're about to have hoisted on us in terms of a... Hoisted on this? Motherfucker. You're a U.S. citizen. What the fuck you mean hoisted? Hoisted? CBDC. I'm not going to tell you... By the CBDC? Hold on, the who? Back the fuck up. Wait a minute. I got. I know I, we got this long, but what? The fuck? We're about to have hoisted on us in terms of a CBDC. I'm not going to tell you or anybody else as governor how a central bank designated currency. Is that what he's talking about? Hey, shithead! You're running to be a governor of an American state. The fuck? How or who to sell your property to? And I imagine that in the end, the mar the free market will work itself out. Thank. you. Yeah, if you, if you want to sell America, if you can buy enough of America to sell it to the Russians, knock yourself the fuck out. That's a winning statement by that dude. You're done. You 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 want it. You're it's definitely going into a Here, runoff now. Stacey Abrams, thirty seconds. The state of Georgia is watching our farmland be purchased by the Chinese Communist Party. And while that is not normally a conversation that we have, it is something that we should be concerned about. Agriculture is our number one industry, and Georgia has 13 military installations. The fact that the state of Georgia is working with the Chinese Communist Party using one of their technologies that both Donald Trump and Joe Biden have warned is very much a national security threat should be of great concern to every Georgian. This is not about being concerned simply about who's owning the land, but it's about how much access to our information they have because of the state. By the way, uh, hold on one second. Uh, I need to get somebody else to come in. Um, can I just say for the record, really fucking smart of her to bring up the CCP land purchase thing to like buffer against Kemp's bullshit Urakami stuff that's going to come up. Thank you, Shane Hazel. You may ask your question of Stacey Abrams. Or whoever. Yeah, I'd agree with you. The uh, military industrial complex is a big problem. It is. Yeah, it totally is. Especially, I mean, the Chinese government's military isn't. They should, you know, we should basically pants ourselves and bend over in front of them. That as good libertarians. And the fact that we have people trying to come here to, I don't know, get a get a backdoor into our, our military. Hello. Um, I think one of the things we should be talking about as Georgians and as executives is the Defend the Guard Act, where our military has been used very, I don't know, haphazardly around the world to go and take resources from the Middle East or now in, in Mr. Ukraine. Mr. Hazel, your this question. Is, yeah, this is my question to who? To Stacey Abrams. Uh, yeah. Oh, we've already switched gears. Yeah. My, my, my oh, God. She was responding to your response. You, she got 30 seconds stupid. And then they told you it was your turn. Fucking hell. My question to you, I'm sorry. It's I, okay. I have hearing problems, guys. Um, my question to you is. Okay. Well, he's uh, got a disability and uh, we'll treat him as such from this point on. And uh, sorry to hear that. I mentioned CBDCs. Or he's just talking out of his ass. As the executive of Georgia, when we come into a CBDC from the Federal Reserve, Will you, as the executive, accept the the CCCP style uh, currency? The U.S. dollars. 
You out of your fucking mind? What, you think George is going to get paid in gold coins? What are you, John Dick? I believe that the conversation about currency is a complicated one. And part of the challenge we have is how these how this currency is transmitted, the very real security threats with digital currency, the hacking and mining of that digital currency should concern all Georgians. As the governor of Georgia, I will work very closely with the Federal Reserve, but also with the innovators and the entrepreneurs who do see an opportunity. But before we take a step forward that could put us at risk, our responsibility is to understand the complexity of what is happening with these transactions. And as exciting as it is, we also know it's deeply problematic when we do not have the adequate safeguards in place. That's one of the reasons I've raised concerns about WeChat. And about he, he's, he's talking about cryptocurrencies and digital payments and shit purchase of farmland. But what we know overall is that we need a governor who's conversant in these issues, who understands that, for example, in the state of Georgia, we have access to $3.5 billion in American currency that could be delivered tomorrow to save our hospitals and to save our lives. But our current governor has refused to accept those dollars. My intention is to do what's best for the state of Georgia every Thank single you. day. Thank you. Shane Hazel, you get a 30 second rebuttal. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. Working with the Federal Reserve, who's got us into the mess that we are in right now. Be uh, by what? Printing Because of a centralized fiat currency. It so d you're just not going to use dollars? It will be absolutely worthless. They will be dangling carrots in front of the governor, in front of the executives, in front of the legislature to do exactly what their mandates are. If they are mandating that they take the property of people, then they will do it. If they want to invade your homes, your privacy, your businesses, they will do it because of CBDCs. All right. Stacey Abrams, please ask your question to Brian Kemp. Absolutely. Mr. Kemp, under... What's your fucking problem? Under your leadership, there is currently a 100-year gap between minority-owned businesses and majority-owned businesses. Although minorities comprise 48% of the population, they only generate 12.2% of the business revenue in the state. And under every analysis that we have seen, it will take 100 years to close that gap, given the current process that you have in place. You served four years in the Senate, eight years as Secretary of State in charge of businesses. You served four years as governor. What are your concrete, specific, targeted plans to decrease and- Shit, I must turn on country uh, accent, deep country accent, go full Savannah. Address the racial equity gap currently facing contracting and purchasing for minority owned businesses. Governor Kim. Well, I would remind Georgians that the first part of my plan was keeping our state open for business and allowing all business people and working Georgians to work when Stacey Abrams was criticizing me for doing that. During COVID, because you don't want people, because dead people can't flip burgers. Also pushing to get our kids back in the classroom. When again, Stacey Abrams was criticizing me for doing that. A lot of Georgians, including African Americans and other minorities, cannot go to work if their kids are not in the classroom. Yeah, that's that's an extraordinary circumstance. That's fucking COVID. That doesn't explain the rest of the fucking decade. We had the lowest unemployment rate in the country for African Americans. We all Yes, they work extra hard and they make less money. That's kind of the point. Also, we're named uh, the top. We're in the top 10 of the states for black entrepreneurship uh, in the state of Georgia. Yeah, because of Atlanta, motherfucker. So our economy is incredible and we will continue to work with all of those entrepreneurs. And John in the chat says, I love when libertarians speak out loud for everyone to see how stupid they sound. It's fucking amazing. Libertarians are the dumbest motherfuckers in the political landscape the days ahead and working class Georgians because we are the ones that have been fighting for you when Miss Abrams was not. We were giving tax refunds. We were doing tax cuts. We were suspending the gas tax to help you deal with 40 year high with federal funds inflation when she was criticizing us. Stacey Abrams, 30 second rebuttal. I would point out that Mr. Kemp did not address the needs of purchasing and contracts for black and brown owned businesses, which is what he has refused to do for the last 16 years. We know that $10.9 billion has been delivered to the state of Georgia through two recent acts at the con congressional level. And Brian Kemp does not have a plan for making certain that people of color have mm -hmm. access to those contracts, access to purchasing. It was only in July of this year that- yes. Country twang initiated. He finally acknowledged that there might be a problem. Operation Good Old Boy 
is a fail. He has said that we need to study it. I would tell him just cheat off of my paper. I know the answer. We need a governor who actually believes in equity, racial equity, Thank economic you. equity in the state of Georgia. And I will deliver. Thank you. Shane Hazel, please ask your question to Brian Kemp. Brian, in 2020, on April 2nd, you locked down Georgia, threatening peaceful people with force and coercion. You called people in Georgia non-essential, and it killed <laughs> millions of jobs. You bent the knee to big pharma and pushed a vaccine that was untested on people, and it has killed people. They Operation Fart Steed. They've lost their loved ones. You've allowed bureaucracy to invade our businesses. Bureaucracy, which is bureaucracy with urine. And then you had the audacity to brag about record tax revenue. You want to say sorry? Record tax revenue? Sorry to anybody? So is that a question or? That is a question. Do you want to say sorry to anybody? Uh, well, look, I'll be glad to talk about my record because obviously uh, Mr. Hazel is gravely mistaken. If you look at the executive orders uh, that I signed, we said every business in Georgia was essential. There was a few that we asked to help us stop the spread, flatten the curve, build PPE supplies and hospital bed capacities. Because unlike him, I was getting the calls from hospitals saying, hey, we are out of surgical gowns. We're out of masks. We need ventilators. And we were literally. You didn't realize that that was a lie and that the earth is flat. But why don't we send rockets into the filament and so that we can stop the giant alien that has a cake dish over the whole world? Working 24-7 to supply those items while also keeping our economy open in this state. And you know how lucky Kemp is to have this dickhead next to him being like even dumber? And as you know, I was the first state to open the small parts that we asked to close. And our recovery has been as good as any state in the country. We have had two record years of economic development because of our business environment, working with the General Assembly to make sure that we're putting Georgians first and Georgia businesses and Georgia workers first. And that's what I'm committed to continuing to do. 30 seconds, Mr. Hazel. You should have put Georgia freedom first, period. You didn't that's right. People should be able to swim in a flood if they want to. It's America. And have the power to lock down businesses. And you signed the executive order on April 2nd. It was clear as day. I sat there and watched you do it. And I was like, there is no coming back from this. Yeah, we, um, Georgia is gone. I don't know if you, it's like Portland. It's vanished off the face of the earth. There is no Georgia. There are no Georgians left. These three people are the only people that are left. The idea that the... the def Even the other people who are asking them questions had to be flown in. They, they were supposed to have more of those people, but all the Georgians are dead. So they have to ask each other questions. I guess the default. It, it is a cloach. <laughs> That's right. Default was fight the cloach to lock down Georgia instead of trusting Georgians with their freedom to <laughs> to pass an infectious disease to their neighbor. Adapt in a time of very changing adapt. circumstances, I think, is a tyrant move. And I think the left and right are fascist and communist socialists, whereas we're talking about real liberty, trusting Thank Georgians with those decisions. Thank you, Mr. Hazel. Brian Kemp, you have the final question in this round for Shane. Uh, three-piece three suit, no tie. Really, dude? Really? Shane Hazel. Well, I, I would just uh, ask Mr. Hazel if he supports the things that we have done because we were open and Georgians were working and we've had excess revenue. So instead of doing big government. That's our tax money. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't support it because Your here's question? the thing is when, when, when we get to that point, when we talk well, about what you're doing, ask, ask my, oh, my, yeah, finish your my question. question, please go ahead. I, I would. Just, yeah, go ahead. It's all stupid anyway. So I don't even know why I'm running for this. Government can't do anything. Also, by the way, understand that this dickhead is going to be set, siphoning MAGA votes from this dickhead. That's why he's like, I'm going to force a runoff. Stacey Abrams is going to be in the lead of that runoff. Just I'm say, sorry. do you support the tax cuts we've done, returning a billion dollars of taxpayer money and suspending the gas tax for Jordans to help? Dude, don't be an asshole. Ask him if he thinks fentanyl should be legalized. Just get it out of the way. What do you mean ask him about tax cuts? Motherfucker, he doesn't believe in taxes at all. Like through 40-year high inflation. This is how dumb Kemp is. And bad domestic energy policy. Georgia, I hope you hear me when I say libertarians think taxation is theft. It's your Right. It's fucking stupid. It's your money. If you want to build a road, fucking do it. Money. It's your property. If you want a bridge, 
Get a fucking hammer and nail, motherfucker. You should be able to determine what you do with it. I don't support the fact that you haven't ended qualified immunity. I don't support the fact that you haven't ended civil asset forfeiture. I don't support the fact that you haven't ended the drug war. You haven't ended nonviolent crime. You had in Why haven't you ended nonviolent crime? Why isn't that a priority? The, the, and, and do you consider tickling violence? Cash bail. You haven't ended no-knock raids. You haven't implemented community review boards. And you haven't bland, uh, banned blacked-out cop cars that go after people for more money. It's Blacked-out cop cars going after people for more money. Yeah, I, uh, dude, I, I, I wish you uh, people knew. You mean undercover? It's ridiculous. De-escalation by the executive to leave peaceful people alone in the state of Georgia. Yes, I'm running to governor so that we don't have a governor. That's my message to both of you, to everybody in the state who wears a badge. <coughs> Stop going after peaceful people. Yes, wait until they're violent. Uh, don't arrest them until after, even if you can stop them in the middle of a, a murder. Let the murderer finish and then arrest them. Mr. Kemp, 30 second rebuttal. Well, that's simply not true. Uh, as Georgians know, I have followed the laws and- Leave it. Stop answering him like he's a legit person. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's called a gish gallop. This guy doesn't, nor, or could he, nor could he actually implement any of those things. This is a farce. The constitution of this state. And I ran after on um, going after Captain QAnon ball over here, criminal street gangs, because I knew there was an issue in our state when other people wouldn't even talk about it and the media wouldn't acknowledge it. And you look at the amount of fentanyl that's coming across the southern border because of bad po border policies from. This and this guy wants to legalize it. Just say that. Get it out of the this administration. Way. Every governor in the country is having to deal with that. So, yes, I'm going to go after bad people that are selling bad drugs and killing our children and our other citizens. Yes, but what about the good drugs? It's a free market way to do that would be We're to allow cannabis and psilocybin to handle the mental health issues. Okay? <laughs> allow cannabis and psilocybin to handle it. Just dump it on people. Put it in the drinking water. Take out the fluoride and put in the mushroom. I wasn't we're talking move on. about cannabis. I was talking about <laughs> deadly gentlemen, Stop we're, busting them then. Gentlemen, we're going to move on. That concludes our second round. For those just joining us, this is the general election debate for, between mm. candidates for governor. We will now Great. go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidate Thank of their God. choice until we run out of time. As a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask questions of the candidates, and I will determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. And I'm going to use that moderator privilege right away to ask some education questions. Mr. Kemp, if reelected, you've said you'll push for $65 million dedicated to fighting pandemic learning loss, more hiring more counselors, and recruiting teachers to fill shortages. How do you respond to those who say you should have prioritized those academic related issues over laws dealing with divisive concepts, parental laws, and obscene books in the past legislative session, even those who were pushed and pushing well, March, we can, uh, if I could uh, throw on my Southern accent for a minute, uh, we could, uh, it don't make people think I can't walk and burn books at the same time. For those laws, in the end, say they don't have much teeth. Well, look, we have been pushing for those things. You can talk to school superintendents around the state. We have worked with them uh, really over the last year and a half, two years on learning loss. We've been, We've been keeping uh, debt uh, like a... Uh, uh, gas prices down in school heating by burning books on a giant bonfire it, to keep students warm. Do you want students to freeze to death during summer school? I don't think so. And working with our superintendents and other education groups, we passed two different pieces of legislation dealing with the teacher pipeline, which is getting more teachers into the system. Our plan has uh, is working with higher education, including our HBCUs and others to make sure we're getting more of the right people and, and more of them in the classroom mm -hmm. to help mentor our children. This is really just the next step. Did, did he say mentor or mental? In the process, we are funding K through 12 education in this state more than we ever have per pupil ever. And that's coming off a recession during the middle of a global pandemic. This includes my promised teacher pay raise of $5,000 that we completed in my first full term, despite having to deal with two years of a global can uh, pandemic and a recession. So I think. 
I think candemic is great. Uh, that's way to be positive, dude. Just say candemic. It's incredible. We're turning this pandemic into a candemic. Come on, everybody. Get up off those ventilators and come out. Get up. Are you going to turn turn them over? He can't move? Okay, I'll just go there. What we've been doing, but make no mistake, we have more work to do, and I'm committed to doing that. Thank come you. Shane Hazel, would you tell us your education plan? I think people should be able to educate themselves. As libertarians, people should have the freedom to be dumb as shit. Yeah, it's to put it in the hands of the private sector. The government education system that came from Prussia in the 1700s has obviously failed America. It came from Prussia in the 1700s. Did you go to public schools, asshole? Of course you Americans. did. We don't understand economics. We don't understand our civil culture. We don't understand a whole lot about what goes on behind the scenes in, in politics. Yeah, why is there a class on backroom deals? The the idea that we want to privatize everything as libertarians is good for education. Think about Walmart having a monopoly on yeah. force to teach your children. Think about Walmart having a monopoly on force to teach your They don't. They don't. There's no monopoly on fucking force. You can go to a private school or a religious school. It just has to be accredited so they don't turn out useless dumbasses it's insane the I <laughs> yes that's insane yes walmart teaching children would be insane and that's exactly what you're suggesting yeah that we do this with a government it has side effects it is why the fuck are you running for governor then dumb fuck why not start a big private school organization that's what drives me crazy about most Republicans, much less libertarians. We see them on a, on a daily basis. We need to get government out of education. We need to allow parents to seek out the best education for their kids. And if they can't afford it, they should just not fucking have kids or suffocate them or something. And we also believe that they have the responsibility to do so. So to help fix this nation, uh, start here in Georgia, is get the government and the admin out of the classroom and get it out of our lives. Thank Thank what do you mean? Is that I, as governor of Georgia, I will shut down all public schools. That's basically, is that it? Fucking hell. Thank you. Ms. Abrams, <laughs> in education, you propose a boost in teachers pay, more state paid preschool slots for lower income children and their families and more. If you win the governor's race, you'll likely have Republican majorities in both chambers. Given what we know about part of partisan divisions, how will you get your education proposals passed and funded? Well, I don't think they want our children to be stupid and wandering around the streets high on psilocybin mushrooms and com and not able to read a stop sign like this bald motherfucker over here. So as long as there's some relatively Kempish people in there, I think we can have a conversation. So let's begin with what my proposals are. Georgia is sitting on a $6.6 .6 billion surplus. That's money that we have after we've paid every bill, after we've put 15% aside for say, a rainy day fund. That is money that after we've accounted for increases in population. And I want to invest it in our children and in our families, beginning with making certain that we have pre-K slots. We have four-year-olds on a waiting list. I've never met a four-year-old who waits to turn five. But we can solve that problem with the money we have right now. We can also give an $11,000 pay raise to our teachers instead of a $5,000 pay raise on layaway. We can make certain that we are increasing access to the pipeline because teachers aren't in the pipeline because they <coughs> can't make enough money to take care of themselves and their families. And that is why under... Please tell me the libertarian dude just like like did a bong hit and is coughing because this of governor we have a 67 percent retention rate any other ceo who lost more than 30 percent of their workforce would be fired and that is why my plan is to use the resources we have today to plan for today and tomorrow we've got the money and we have economists in georgia and national economists who have looked at my plan and they say it works check my plan out at stacyabrams.com check my map thank it works thank you 30 by the way for the, for the record, awesome answer. And what she's doing, right? You could look, you could take a class from Stacey Abrams on how she's handling this. She's not taking the bait from any of these assholes. She's got a well-designed response, and she's there to sell herself as a candidate, not just get into a snipe fight with these two dickheads. It's really smart, and it points to somebody who'd be a really good governor. Seconds. Yeah, I'd just like to let people know that, look, my plan is to use the revenue that we have because we've been open. If Stacey Abrams had been your governor over the last four years, you wouldn't have that excess revenue because she wanted the state to stay locked down and criticize me when I opened it back up.
Yeah, and what's she going to do when the next uh, pandemic of a century comes along in 65 years after we've got RNA vaccines? Fuck! We have, in fact, been using this revenue and will do so in the future to do another income tax refund and put the money back in your pocket. We're also going to do a property tax relief grant one time that helps you with rising property values and rising. And he's talking to you, CCP. Rising property taxes that the counties are not rolling back. Thank you very much. If I may respond, because 30 it, seconds. It, it, this is going to go back and forth between Ms. the Democrats for and the Republicans. Ms. If they keep attacking Abrams, each other, please, I'm going to say this is move a on. Cooler, Ms. Abrams, 30 seconds. For Mr. The, Hazel, I, I'm, move we're, on. we're not going to be excluded from this. I'm we're not excluded. We? Who's we? Mr. Royal We? Excluding you, but I'm we, he did the, refer to her, so we are going to have her speak. Yeah, the rules apply to you. Unfortunately, that's anti-libertarian. This is anti-freedom. Uh, rules in and of themselves are a fucking mistake. Speak first. That's why I want to be governor, so I can eliminate all government activity. You're going to take money well, and property from my, people that don't even attend your schools Mr. because they Sir, don't agree Mr. Hazel, with them. We, we want to move on. Ms. Abrams? I want to point out three things that were inaccurate. One, I urged caution because any leader should pr privilege the lives of those they serve. 38,000 people died in Georgia. We have one county where one in every 100 Hancock County residents perished under this governor. And so, yes, I urged caution. But I also urge good math. We have the money in our accounts to do what is right. Money not delivered by Brian Kemp, money delivered by federal Democrats, and money that is delivered by hardworking Georgians who have generated the surplus, and they deserve investments in their lives. And the income taxes that we keep hearing about, 50,000 people Thank are you, getting Ms. half Abrams. a billion dollars. The rest of us are going to see 193 bucks. Thank that you, is Ms. not Abrams. a good return on investment. Shane Hazel, 30 seconds. Seconds, please. It's stolen we have money. To move on. Well, All well. of it's stolen money. <laughs> yes, taxes are are useless. We need to shut down the federal and state governments so that and make get a promise from the Chinese and the Russians and the Saudis and the Iranians and the at Eastern European former Soviet socialist republics to do the same thing from people. We have property. The fact that we have property tax in America has got to be one of the most un-American things I've ever heard of. There are a lot of us at homeschool because we don't believe in the government school system. You sound homeschooled. I'm just saying. System. And we are still fleeced every year to the tune of thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, because if you have a business, you benefit from the other people who don't and don't have time or the ability to homeschool, uh, you privileged prick. So they, you know, the reason you don't die driving through regular intersections all the time is because uh, people can read and they were taught by the state. ...to pay for a broken school system that we don't agree with. That's right. both of you guys. You benefit from it all the time. Just because you take something for granted doesn't mean it's granted in the first place. Well, with, with all due respect, Ms. Abrams called me out again. All right. About these... 30 impacts, seconds and, and then be, we really be, are... And I've always used my draw so I can say like nine words in... 25 seconds. We're going to move on. But the federal money that we're able to use right now and spend is because our state was open. And we didn't have to use this federal money to backfill state revenues, which has put us in an incredible position uh, to move forward in our state. Mr. So, Kemp, so we're one blame, of several states that so have had the same this, exact to blame experience, this but Ms. On, it is disingenuous to claim not having done a conversation. this on your own. We're going to move on. It's the people's we're, money. We're going to it's the people's money. Yes, exactly. And we democratically elect people to guide some of that money to keep our society functioning and modern. Move on, uh, gentlemen and, and Ms. Abrams. Greg Bluestein, you have the next question. Ms. Abrams, I want to go back to one of uh, Donna's underlying questions, which is the how issue. Absolutely. Uh, you've staked out dozens of policy proposals that would have to win approval from lawmakers, including Medicaid expansion, including uh, several of the proposals you outlined here today. But it's highly likely the legislature will remain in Republican control. Yes. How are you going to win approval of the... Spherical, spherical man, yeah, Mr. Sovereign Citizen is throwing off Andrew Tate vice. I guarantee he watches all those These things. measures uh, when in the face of staunch Republican opposition. Well, I don't actually believe there is staunch Republican opposition. I served in the legislature for 11 years, and every day during my tenure, I worked across the aisle to get good done. They put it in my title. I was minority leader, meaning I couldn't win unless I could work with others. That is why I'm the only person I know of who got an A rating from the Georgia Chamber of Commerce and the Friend of Labor Award for the same work in the same year. 
the work that I do is working with people to find out how we get solutions. Medicaid expansion is a perfect example. We have 19 hospitals at risk of closure, joining the six hospitals that have closed under this governor. We are sending a Brinks truck of $3.5 billion of our money to Kentucky, to Louisiana, to Ohio, because this governor will not accept the money. And the resources that we need in our state will come to our state when we have leaders willing to work across the aisle to bring our money home. But it's more important than that. It's about how do we take care of our families? How do we make certain that we're addressing high housing prices? How do we tackle the issue of gun violence? How do we support our freedoms and protect our people? And we need a governor who can do the math, but also do the morality of making sure we take care of every single Georgia. Thank you, Ms. Abrams. Governor Kemp, you have 30 seconds. Well, I would just say that one way we deal with gun violence is to take the bad. Why is he not wearing overalls? People that are doing the shootings and lock them up and not in cash bail like Miss Abrams wants to do. For nonviolent misdemeanors. But listen, she's also said that the silver bullet on health care is Medicaid expansion, adding 600, 650,000 people. Well, there's been 600,000 people added to the Medicaid roll since I've become governor. And the problem is it's a broken government program that she wants the government decide your health care that will also kick 200,000 private citizens off their private sector health care. Thank you. I may respond. 30 uh, second like rebuttal. Just, just talk about he this. He called just her name. Miss Abrams, you have a 30 second rebuttal. This is ridiculous. Number one, Medicaid expansion will allow 500,000 Georgians who are working people to get access to health care. That is a good thing in a state where we have people dying every day from cancer, from issues with health, issues with diabetes, issues with heart disease. But number two, the 600,000 people that he references who are on Medicaid, they are put there because of the public health emergency. And when that ends, they will lose health care, which will add more people. Yeah, that is true. People who are on the streets <laughs> unable to get health care. Under this governor, we've lost six hospitals. We have ambulance wait times that are excessive right. and our Thank people need I'll, relief I and like they need wait. their... Meanwhile, the libertarian guy goes, uh, you shouldn't be waiting for an ambulance. You should get up and walk to the fucking hospital like an American. Yeah, I would like to wait. We want to we want to give our panelists yeah. a chance to ask more but questions. So we're, we're Chuck Williams, it is your we're turn to ask a question, Mr. It's insane. Governor, the Democrats have controlled the U.S. Senate for two years because Georgia shifted from two Republicans to two Democrats in January of 2021. One of those seats was held by Kelly Leffler, a person you appointed to that post. She then lost to Senator Warnock. Do you wish you had made a different choice when you were selected Kelly Leffler? No. Well, no, not at all. I mean, I I was ex <laughs> like, what the fuck is he gonna say? Excited about her candidacy. I know she worked extremely hard. Um, it was smart, a very challenging hard. environment in 2020, and I think it goes to the point that in 2020, watching that election, I learned a lot of lessons. You know, a lot of the things that we haven't been doing with the ground game from a political perspective, we are now doing. Make it yeah, we thought it'd be just enough to stop people, the other side, from voting. We got to push to start voting on our side. Sure, that when we're campaigning, that we're making sure what we know the differences are with the candidates. But also, we got to be for something. And what I'm for is doing another billion dollar tax rebate, for doing property tax relief grants, for continuing to strengthen rural Georgia and run rural broadband like we have been doing that we started this. Fuck you, rural broadband. That Biden's program, you dick. Program long before the pandemic hit. Doing economic development projects where 74% of the investment of over $30 billion over the last two record years is going to rural Georgia. Over half the you know, 80,000 jobs that are going with those projects outside the 10 metro counties in rural Georgia. And I'm committed to doing that in the future. Mr. Hazel, if you would like to have 30 seconds, you may. Thank you very much. The, 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 the state of Georgia. The problem is, is that we've got a government at all. Needs a governor who understands econ. The 200. Econ. <laughs> $100 trillion of unfunded liability in this country as a veteran, understanding that we have a veteran's health care system that is in shambles. They treat you as a liability and they will throw pills at you every chance they get. They won't actually address your health. There is no way on earth we're going to expand that to the rest of the 99% of the country. It's a fairy tale and it doesn't exist. That's why the economy is collapsing because they continue to print trillions and trillions of dollars. Oh, fuck this dude. And hike interest rates at the same time. Thank Policies you very much. Like 
and hike interest rates at the same time. You can't do both, you dumb son of a bitch. That are going to do this. Literally, you don't. That's the whole point. Quantitative tightening is caused by raising interest rates. Oh my fucking god, this guy. People got to they got to understand econ. Shut the fuck up. Same. Thank you. Jennifer Bellamy, uh, it's your turn to ask. This is so aggravating. Question. This question is for each of you. What do you mm. see as the biggest challenge facing Georgia and Georgians? And how do you think it should be addressed? What will you do as governor to address that challenge? Let's start with you, Stacey Abrams. Gang crime is up. Gun violence is up. Housing prices have skyrocketed. Equity investment. Yeah, they're coming down. Though. Have purchased 30 percent of the homes in the state of Georgia. They're selling. We have one point four million people without health insurance who cannot see a doctor when they need one. We live in a state of fear. And this is a governor who's for the last four years has beat his chest, but delivered very little for most Georgians. He has weakened gun laws and flooded our streets. He has. By the way, Scott Moore says uh, a chain could, would have had a better shot of coherence if he took a page out of Perot's book and brought charts and graphs. You can't. Uh, they don't allow props anymore, as we found out with the Herschel Walker. Weakened case. our privacy rights and our and women's rights. He has denied women the access to reproductive care. The most dangerous thing facing Georgia is uh, four more is. years of Brian Kemp. We need a governor who actually understands the math and the morality. We need to understand that, yes, we have veterans, like Mr. Hazel pointed out, who can't get access to health care in part because they're not fully covered by VA benefits and will only get health insurance if we expand Medicaid. We have seniors who are being forced out of their homes because. Oh, she took his talking point away and hit him with As it. This governor refuses to address the issue of housing crises. In fact, he told an audience that he didn't want to upset investors by giving local local authorities control over housing prices, letting them you, address the issues. We I'm, need a governor I who will do give, more I want to give I want to give each one of them a chance to answer the Jennifer's question. Shane Hayes. The biggest problem facing us is the economy, but to quote uh, the great Rob Tell us, tell us how. Rothbard, the man who puts all the guns and all of the decision-making power into the hands of a central government and then says, limit yourself, is he truly the impractical utopian? The idea that the economy isn't the biggest problem that we have in Georgia is because people don't understand economics. The yeah, you stupid Georgian voters, you dumb sons of bitches. These guys don't understand economics from Republicans or Democrats or else we wouldn't be in the hole that we're in in terms of trillions and trillions of dollars. I guarantee this dumb motherfucker has a mortgage. Dollars. What we need to do is get back to basics. Austrian economics, where we get rid of this cancer that has invaded every transaction that Usury? we have through a fiat. I, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Rewind that. Yeah. Dollars. What we need to do is get back to basics. Austrian economics, where we get rid of this cancer that has invaded every transaction that we have through a fiat currency system. Again, what, what this motherfucker thinks is the governor of Georgia, he's going to put us back on the gold standard. The fuck is he talking Creating about? Creating freedom for everybody in Georgia is the default position. Not yes, freedom means having enough gold on hand to make transactions happening this not month more government not more programs not more policies not more point at the barrel no more yeah the last thing we need is a governor Girl of a gun force and coercion it is freedom all right Brian. what the fuck does that mean Brian kemp your answer to the question well uh, i'll f I, i'm sorry i i'm so I'm caught in like a dumb haze. There's a smoke coming off this motherfucker that I don't understand. Can you ask the question again? Because literally that was just fucking gibberish. First, since I didn't get a rebuttal after being called out, would we'll just let Jordans know again that my record's being attacked because Miss Abrams doesn't want to talk about her own record. If you look at what the state of Georgia and our first lady, Mar your governor, she isn't. Marty Kemp has done to raise the awareness on ending human trafficking going after the perpetrators and supporting the victim, as well as us working with the General Assembly to give Medicaid benefits to new to birthing mothers up to a year uh, after having that child and other things, shows you our state and other things that we value life and that we care. But in the future, my focus is going to be what it was when I opened the debate, and that is helping you fight through 40-year high inflation and disastrous policies in Washington, D.C. How? I would remind you that Stacey Abrams campaigned to be Joe Biden's running mate. 
She supports these policies that have raised taxes on hardworking Americans and Georgians when they promised they would not. We're working with the General Assembly to help you fight through that by suspending the gas tax and giving your money back to you your much. pocket. Thank you very much. Greg, your next question. Hey, Governor, I want to stay with you um, and, and talk about... Uh, like the libertarian dude should just every time go fucking hell like every time they ask That's something that else just came up in the last exchange a little bit earlier today you rolled out a new public safety plan that, that offers a crackdown or promotes a crackdown on criminal offenses what it doesn't specifically address is gun violence your critics say that you're a permissive gun policy that because there's no such thing uh the only thing that can stop a good guy with a gun is an even gooder guy with a gun and there are no bad guys with guns. If you have a gun, you're a good guy in my book. Is there applause or should I wait? I'll just assume at the end when they applaud, they were applauding that. Policies will only lead to more crime. What do you propose you will do in a second term if you're reelected to address gun-related crimes? Well, again, we're, we're going after the people that are doing these gun-related crimes. I mean, and that's what we're doing, going after uh, doing. street gangs in this regard. What you know, during doing. the pandemic, when I was talking to people about how we were responding and what we were dealing with, I, was, I couldn't understand them because they were wearing masks. I was hearing from educators and athletic directors and other people saying, Governor, we got to get our kids back in the classroom. Cause we're it's weird you weren't talking to the people who were saying we can't because it's not healthy. Weird. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Nobody finds that. We're okay. losing them. We're going to lose them a decade of children. No, we're not. Because these kids that we're recruiting when they're 13, 14, 15 year old, uh, years old to be on the ball field or be in the band or be on the robotics team or what have you, extracurricular activity, they're being recruited by street gangs because they're not in the classroom. So those are the kind of things that we are focused Maybe if the state wasn't open at the same time the schools were closed, uh, never mind. Focused on to make sure that these kids are under the right environment. And my new public safety plan is stiffening. That's the problem. And new street gangs are always scooping up the kids in robotics club. Penals, penalties for gang, uh, gang members that are recruiting our children. And I believe that most Georgians support that. And I'm committed to working with all law enforcement to make a dent there. Thank you. Chuck Williams. A dent. Uh, this is for Governor Kemp and Ms. Abrams. And not the libertarian guy, because we've heard enough gibberish tonight. Columbus, Macon, Atlanta, and other communities have benefited from a Georgia State Patrol task force that has helped augment police coverage in those cities and some others over the last year. What can be done to make sure that local agencies, agencies that are short on officers, can handle these police, policing duties without having to rely on the state? Ms. Abrams? Well, yes. You actually asked Mr. Kemp. I said for both. Okay. Yeah, it's for both. Governor. Yeah, look, I'm glad to uh, answer that question. The crime suppressing unit that I asked Colonel Wright to put together during civil unrest when I grew tired of local elected political leaders that wouldn't let their local law enforcement go after dangerous people during civil unrest that had no chase policies where street racers and street gangs are terrorizing our citizens. I told Colonel Wright I wanted to plan. Colonel Wright, who doggy? I wanted to know how much it's going to cost, and I want to know who we're going to work with. And so that's why the State Patrol, GBI, Department of Natural Resources, Game Wardens, working with the Fulton County Sheriff, who's helped us with jail facilities, the Atlanta Police Department, we went and put a plan together to start going after street racers and going out. By the way, I'm Colonel Wright. Hey, I helped him put this whole thing together, and uh, we we going after them straight racers on horseback after violent criminals and have more boots on the ground the chocolate and the smooth all in one treat we've done the same thing in columbus we've done it in macon we've done it in savannah and we'll do it wherever we're needed this is not That's our right. job we're using funds from the governor's emergency um uh fund just say fun. A fun to help. Thank you. See, that was easy. Just, it's a really simple word. One syllable starts with an F U. Pay for these dollars. And thankfully, the General Assembly supports that because we've been in the fight when others were not. Thank That's you, right. Ms. Abrams. Street gangs did not shoot six Asian women going into a gun store, getting a weapon, and murdering women in less than an hour. Street gangs aren't the reason people are getting shot in grocery stores and in parking lots and at schools. Street gangs. Yeah, but 
I mean, that we don't care about those. Things are one part of the problem, but we have a governor who has weakened gun laws across this state, yep. flooded our streets with guns by letting dangerous people get access to those weapons. Georgia does not have a waiting period. We do not have universal background checks. And one of the few permits that we had that was helping keep us safe stopped 5,000 people who should not have had weapons from getting them. I feel seen. Got weakened by this governor with his criminal carry law. As the next governor, my intention would be to actually give the people who do 90% of law enforcement the support they need. We know that they have asked for at least $136 million so they can recruit and retain officers. I That's right. And the uniforms are expensive, especially mine, because I have to let them out in the crotch. I am the only candidate who's put in place a plan for at least $25 million in grants, not loans, to go to these local law enforcement officers so they can recruit and retain officers. I'm starting to like this woman. I, I did not intend to, but she sounds all right. This is, I'm, 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 these are new failings and I'm having a hard time dealing with them. Be gentle. So that their officers aren't working two or three jobs simply to make ends meet. Thank you. Before your rebuttal, uh, Governor Kemp, no, let the libertarian guy say we shouldn't have cops on the street. Just come on. It won't take him long. Just let him say cops are violence and we should just let people people work it out for themselves. Like home think about homeschooling but with guns. Shane Hazel, Thank you, you may much. respond to this question. Yeah, tell him Shane. You keep going back to guns, Stacy. Yeah, she keeps going back to guns. Guns don't kill people. Government kills people. And I think it's going to be your undoing here in Georgia. Georgia, we're going to have less and less gun laws, whether it's under Republicans or Libertarians. Libertari yes, they're, they're need, we don't need gun laws, okay? You should have the freedom to murder as long as you kill somebody with a gun. It's these knife fuckers we got. Libertarians don't believe in any gun laws. We believe that you know how to best protect you and your property. And the biggest mass murderer in history is government. It's Yikes. The biggest mass murderer in history is government. Obviously, this fella is not familiar with the Catholic Church in the 15th century. Not private citizens. Most private citizens, like I said before, go throughout their day without doing any harm to any. Because the government does the shooting for them, you dumb motherfucker. Okay, look. If, if we didn't have police officers... You bet your ass private citizens would do most of the... Have you ever watched an episode of Kung Fu where there hasn't been an, a woman living all on her lonesome with two children in the middle of fucking nowhere that doesn't have to shoot somebody with a long rifle? Motherfucker. Anybody, however, the people in the government with all of the guns... St right. And laws about how they use them instead of just rando fuckheads. They'll go after people with a badge when they shouldn't have to. In Holly Springs, Georgia, what? I introduced the Helios Initiative where we got rid of civil asset forfeiture. It was a one-page bill through decentralization, nullification, using the Constitution that made the officers in Holly Springs safer because they don't have to go out there and they don't have to harass people of color while driving while black. They don't have to go out there and look for... They, they can't do... Anything, you dumb motherfucker. Drugs, they don't have... You know, the dangerous part about being a police officer is doing police work. So I, I saved a lot of police officers' lives by having them not actually enforce laws. Genius. Go out there and do any of these things. Yeah, like fighting crime. It's very dangerous. Because civil asset forfeiture is also the government stealing more than criminals, hardened criminals, from anybody and everybody. In no, yes, I disagree. The government should not steal hardened criminals. They should give them due process and put them in fucking jail. The state of Georgia. Thank you, Governor Kemp, 30 seconds. Well, thank you. Uh, I would just let people at home know the largest, fastest growing segment of the population that's buying handguns and firearms is African Americans. Uh huh. And females. You know why? Because, because their lives are in danger. Because the criminals. Because of uh, assholes like that dude who are allowing criminals in op in different counties throughout the state to operate with impunity. Are the only ones that do have the guns. Yeah. 
No. If you if you dump guns, people are going to have to defend themselves because there won't be enough guns to go around. Oh, have local hell. governments that are holding up concealed weapon permits that are keeping law-abiding citizens from, pen, from being able to from concealing their guns to simply uh, uh, use their Second Amendment right to protect themselves and to open fire in Whole Foods parking lots as they are wont to do in their property and their families. I will certainly support that. Because Thank you, Mr. Hazel. May, may I respond? Please? Yes, 30 seconds. Let's be clear. I believe that we can protect the Second Amendment and protect second graders at the exact same time. That means that, yes, more people are buying guns, but that's because they think that's the only way to protect themselves because guns have flooded our streets. These are communities that want to be safe. They don't want to have to carry weapons. I know how to shoot. My great grandmother taught me. But I know that the person who is most responsible is the person who holds the weapon. And that is why I will quote Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. And because of the criminal carry law that Brian Kemp signed into law, there is no longer a background check for those who have concealed carry permits. That makes that sound you hear is both of their dick shrinking. Just in case there was that you guys heard that kind of sound like a, a like the, the tiny sound of like a mouse squeal and the twist of leather like a leather strap. That was the sound of Kemp and Hazel's penis is shrinking. It's all of us. Thank less you very safe. much. How are you going to take the guns? Don, if I could respond. How, how are you going to take the guns? That's a great really question. want to move on. Well, there, there is a federal background check. There is a federal background check on every individual that buys a firearm in the United States of America. Which shouldn't exist either. No, nope. so, that is not. Wait, uh, the dude's like, hey, hey uh, uh, we shouldn't even check people. If you want a gun, buy a fucking gun. You're probably going to use it on yourself. Problem solved. Well, the, the point, Mr. I, Mr. I, I understand, that's not true. I understand the, the point you're making, but the. N no, dude, you don't. I came in here on your side. Now I'm on hers. I don't know how it happened. It's weird. I, again, it's an odd feeling, but I'm okay. The point is, when you buy a firearm, you get a background check. Mr. And, Kim, of, and, and the libertarian dude hates it, just for the record. Right. None of the laws more changed. On Mr. Who, Kemp, if you burnt... More, that motherfucker said more tyranny. Purchase None a of, weapon in Georgia through a gun sale or a private sale. Well, through a gun Abrams, show I, or a private have, sale, you're I not right, subject we're, to that. We're going to have to move... But uh, just for the record, no guns were allowed in the room at this debate, and the libertarian dude is, uh, is still upset about that. Fine. Interrupted you tonight. No, I apologize. Candidates, we have. It's a back gown check. I apologize. Move on. I'm going to allow. I'm going to allow Jennifer to ask. What's going to be the final question in this round? And it's not going to go to the libertarian dude, and it's going to make him all mad. Uh, a study recently showed frustration among our nation's teachers with political interference into education with issues like COVID-19 and critical race theory presenting additional challenges to a profession that's already dealing with low pay, falling interest, and people. Please ask the libertarian dude. He'll just say, no public schools, and move on. People leaving. What would you do specifically as governor to recruit, retain, and empower educators for, for schools across the state of Georgia? Okay, now they're just fucking with the libertarian dude. For each of you. Should I? All right, we'll start with you, Ms. Abrams. And let me again, again apologize to Mr. Kemp for interrupting. Mm, this is a very important topic to me, and I apologize for my outburst. I will say that when it comes to education, we know... And uh, I'm also very sorry that uh, Brian Kemp is a little bitch and can't take it. Now just, can I throw that in there? No? Okay. I'm not speaking on her behalf. That's just my own personal feeling. Teachers are leaving the workforce. We have a 67% retention rate, but 70% of our teachers have said they would not recommend teaching to their colleagues. 67 to 70% of that 30%, 70%. So 30% would leave, but they wouldn't take anybody with them. Okay. That is because of low pay, because mm -hmm. of overregulation, because of high stress, and because they believe that they are being told to teach to a curriculum that does not reflect the values and needs of our students. When a teacher is told that you have to lie to a child, which is what happened with the divisive language, the divisive concepts la legislation. Teachers are not being able to teach the whole history of our students. They're well, you can't teach from a book that's on fire. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not safe. They're not able to tell their children what they need to know. This book, this book is literally burning in my hands up. It's a hot book. It's hot. The shit is hot. As the next governor of Georgia, I will repeal those laws. I will increase pay and I will make certain that all of our teachers can start and continue through their time. Thank well paid much. and well protected and well supported by the government. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So only 45 seconds. So, um, Brian Kemp. 
Well, I would just say this is exactly why I did the $5,000 teacher. It's pronounced exactly. Pay raise that I ran on in 2018. Uh -huh. uh, we've also done a parent's bill of rights to have yep. parents fully engaged with their schools to make sure that they know what's happening in their kids. Cop out, motherfucker. It's, quite honestly, people are tired of their kids being indoctrinated in the classroom. But we've also... Where the hell are they supposed to be indoctrinated? At Libertarian Summer Camp? It's just a bunch of people in the woods setting their kids loose. So work with our educators on these pieces of legislation to make sure that they make good yeah. common sense. But good old common sense, which is largely uncommon and therefore needs, needs to be taught. But I would also tell you that people are tired of these issues like not, They're exhausted. not having fairness in girls' sports and other things. And quite honestly, it's woken a lot of people up. So we got to. He said woke. Continue to have good conversations like we've done. With he actually said woken people up, but never mind. With our p teacher pipeline legislation. Not to be confused with walking people up, which is very different if you think about it. Like we're doing with helping 9,000 para pros get fully certified to be in the classroom. Thank you very kids. much. Shane Hazel. Para pro? You mean like paranormal psychologists? Oh, dear God. Are Atlanta schools haunted? Film at 11. Well, you get 45 your, seconds. Your question raises a lot of interesting points. A lot of these teachers, like my own wife, has left the profession of teaching to homeschool, to go to... <laughs> really? I'm shocked. ...private school, to do something... To start an M. Night Shyamalan-like village. ...being outside of this narrative where admin from the federal government and the state government is forcing them to teach things they don't want to teach, to teach to test. They can't stand... Yeah, like math and science and not... Cool things like econ and space stuff. The administration who makes six figures, it is bloated. It has absolutely gotten out of control. We need to nullify property tax. We need to let people get out of the system. We need to. They can. They can buy uh, land in other states. To allow the private sector to work. Because before education was put under the thumb of government here, we had some of the brightest, most well-read people in the entire world. That's because the whole fucking world was illiterate. You're talking about the 1800s, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> we were one of the few countries that could afford fucking books. And that's what we need to bring back. All right. What the fuck? You're shitting me, right? Come on now. Come on. That motherfucker, before we had public education we had some of the smartest people in the world because most people were banging rocks together back then you dumb son of a bitch what shit thank you very much we are running out of time so boy are we that is all the time we have for questions well and i guess we did run questions. out of time each candidate will now have only 40 seconds for a closing statement that's not enough that's what for, you're taking my freedom and brian kemp you get the first closing statement Yes, ladies first. Well, first of all, let me thank the Atlanta Press Club for having us. When mm -hmm. I ran for governor in 2018, they kissed my ra rosy red ass. I promised to put hard work in Georgians first ahead of the status quo and the politically correct. I said shortly after being sworn. Ahead of the politically correct. Oh, you mean polite people. I said. Born so. in. I would work hard as your governor every single day for all Georgians, uh -huh. whether you voted for me or not. Come on I'm now. so optimistic about the future of our state. The lowest unemployment rate in the history of the state. The most people working. In oh, sorry. Uh, Deanne says, in between the cover and end of Beloved isn't the place for marshmallows and chocolate book s'mores. Yeah. Well, that's how we make s'mores. Cook them off a book. Economic opportunity in all parts of our state, no matter your zip code or neighborhood. Stacey Abrams said Georgia's the worst state in the country to live. Well, Marty, the girls and I disagree. We Marty? Oh, Marty's his wife. I thought he was calling her Marty all of a sudden. That was weird. I think Georgia's the greatest state in the country to live, work, and raise our children. And that's why. Yeah, I, you would feel that as the governor because you have a really nice house. Best in the state in some ways. I'm asking for your vote and support to keep it that way. Thank, thank you. you. And God bless. Thank you. Stacey Abrams, 40 seconds. I, too, want to thank everyone tonight for your support. And I want to point out that Brian Kemp did make promises. He promised to keep us safe, but crime has gone up. 
He promised to protect us, and yet he's attacked our freedoms. He has promised to take care of our families, and yet the rising prices in Georgia are rising because he refuses to expand Medicaid, because he refuses to tackle the affordable housing crisis that we have, and he's sitting on $400 million of our money that he will not spend to keep us under roofs and in our homes. As the next governor, I want us to have more, more money in our pockets, more protections in our lives, more freedoms in our days, and more opportunity in our communities. I see all of Georgia, and as the next governor, it would be my intention to serve all of Georgia. I encourage you to go to my website, StacyAbrams.com, and please make a plan to Thank vote. You. And know that I'm asking Thank you for you. your vote tonight. Thank you. That was pretty simple, pretty direct. She dropped her website. She got everybody. She motivated to get out to vote. That's part of her fucking brand. Now, the rest of us are all really excited about the libertarian guy whose biggest challenge, I think, is getting people to vote for him to be governor of the government of a state that he thinks shouldn't exist. Not just the governance itself, but of the state borders. Like, you do realize that, right? Like, he doesn't think Georgia should exist. Thank you, Shane Hazel. You get the final 40 second closing statement. This is going to be good. I'm excited, man. Come on, Georgia. You are essential. Yeah, don't don't listen to which who said shit. We are in changing times, technology, money, politics. I'm your cryptocurrency guru. Come touch my head for good luck. We're all changing incredibly fast. And you're too stupid to keep up. That's why you need somebody who knows econ. As humans, our superpower is our ability to adapt to a changing world. Yeah, that's not a superpower. That's just, by the way, can I can I switch over to, I feel like I need to look more. Is that, hold on. I might, I got a beard or something. Where's this? Uh, this will do. That's close as I got. I, I don't have a full fucking beard. Shane Hazel. I don't know. I gotta. I. I wish I had something to look a little more. It, how about this one, Shane? You like this? Hey, man, Shane Hazel, probably don't like me at all. Come on. Uh, wait. I got one looks just like him. Hold on. Okay, go for it, Shane. Tell us what's up, buddy. This power to adapt, our passion and genius, is unleashed when it is free. You goddamn right. Free from tax. Free, free from government. Free from everything. Free from Georgia. Georgia is, a, is, is the existence of Georgia is a slave state. There are lockdowns. Free from government mandates. Free from government at all. That's why as your governor, my first act will be to shut down the actual government. That, in every way. And free from force. My mustache keeps coming and going. I don't know what the fuck's happening. And coercion. You know best how to adapt and run your life. And that is your right to do so. That's right. It is time, peaceful people were free to take on the challenges we face. That's right. And violent people are allowed to as well. I got to put this got to be a little bit better. Come on now. All right. Tell me. Tell me what's up, man. Come on. That's right. I'm a, I'm part of his libertarian club, man. We we do this kind of like uh, male bonding butt bongo thing uh, that we do every week. And we, do, we all get together. It's, a, it's like a drumming circle. We all watch Andrew Tate videos and then touch each other on the taint. It's Andrew Tate night uh, at the bowling alley. Our message Thank to you. the government is simple. Stop existing as a functioning entity. It's Thank time you, to leave Hazel. peaceful people alone. If you believe the government we, is so damn essential, we have to go. I'm stop sorry. Stop robbing us at the Thank point you. of a gun and compete with That us. concludes our debate. Hey, shut his mic off. Freedom! We'd like to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. And uh, early voting has already started. And early voting has already begun. You're welcome. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists. We'd also like yeah. to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. Hey, thank you. <laughs> for more information about the debates they will host this election season, visit atlantapressclub.org mm. slash debates. I'm Donna Lowry. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to say for the last for second the that the Atlanta Press Club should not exist. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's forced coercion. Forced, they're forcing people to believe in the, uh, the free press is uh, is instrument of the uh, establishment this is <laughs> the atlanta press club debates great great man that was great i feel like i learned so much stacy did fantastic i thought let's just uh
Let's just sum this up if we can real quick, uh, and I'll let you guys go. Um, thanks for joining me, by the way, for the full take on that. Um, I, I got to say, if you want to learn how to do it and you're thinking about running for office, watch how Stacey Abrams handled that debate. She was masterful. She was on point. She didn't let herself get backed into a corner by any of their bullshit talking points. She even headed them off at the pass. Very smart woman. Very effective. Really terrific. Go, Stacy, go. Just saying. Just like a fucking boss. Absolutely. Um, that was really impressive. Um, and the and the the other side, by the way, and it was, believe me, there were two halves in this, was uh Hazel and Kemp, who were basically running for the same voter. And the and the anti-Kemp maggots are all gonna vote for Hazel, and they're, if they vote at all. And there aren't enough of them to make a fucking dent. They're just going to diminish Kemp and push Stacey Abrams over the hump. If, the, if this debate is indicative of fucking anything, it's that Trump has fucked Kemp into a corner right at the time he's up against one of the most effective um, opponents he's ever had politically. And she's had, she's been through this. Like she came this close last time. And if he hadn't been secretary of state, there's an argument that by denying, you know, uh, working voting machines and slowing the rolls effectively, he discouraged enough of a vote to get ahead. That's not going to happen this time. And the, uh, you know, Georgia voters, especially, and especially minority voters and those who give a shit about them, because that's the vast majority of people in this country, I truly believe, is, you know, there's the minority and then there's the majority of, of white voters that are like, fuck that, you don't take the vote from somebody who are actually on her side. And they are either, if they're not going to vote directly for her, they support her by not voting for one of these two dickheads. So really great stuff. Really great stuff. Um, I like Beto a lot, but, but Stacey Abrams is... Amazing. Do you think she'll make over 50%? Yes, I, I do, because I think Kemp and, and Hazel will diminish each other's vote enough to grind it down. And the two of them, you got to understand, in Georgia, one of the best things Warnock has going for him is the fact that maggots hate Kemp and they don't want to vote. And they're not going to show up and then not vote. They're just going to not show up. They're going to eat each other. Shave your head and vote libertarian. And and again, for the record, libertarians are assholes. It is not a functioning governance. And if they believed anything they fucking say, they wouldn't even be involved in government. They would all be, you know, Elon Musk's. They would all swamp the entire system with how great they are. They do everything in the private sector and they fucking well don't. It's the same thing with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie Taylor Greene seems to like the government's the problem. Yeah, because assholes like you are in it, wasting everyone's time yammering about bullshit instead of actually trying to help your constituents. So I, I think this is fascinating. And I think Abrams clearly nailed this. And as a matter of fact, I, I, I would argue that Warnock could take lessons from how to operate in this situation. She just nailed it. So anyways, much love to you guys. I will see you uh, tomorrow in the afternoon. And then after tomorrow's show... I'm going to pack myself in my car and drive to L.A., do my morning show and the afternoon show from uh, L.A., and then I'm going to uh, do my uh, flapper show. Still making up my mind whether I come back before the Saturday Sexy Liberal show. Probably will. So Thursday will probably be here because I'm a fucking maniac. Anyways, uh, I love you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And remember, if you're ever presented with a choice that somebody tells you is the lesser of two evils, it's easy. Choose less evil. See you guys tomorrow.